What is up, guys? Welcome back for week three of the NPL Miners. This week we are taking on Rob Jr. or Poke TCG Gamer 1288, as you can see on your screen. Uh, this guy, at the beginning of Gen 7, and I think even still now, um, found himself at the top of a lot of the uh, Smogon singles ladders being like OU and UU. Uh, so I knew this guy was a threat. Uh, we uh, were, we talk, you know. I know who he is. So. Uh, I know he's a very good player. Now, I'm not doing a team builder, as you can see. We're already on the battle screen, and I'm going to show you because there are some sets that I do not want to reveal because there's a very good likelihood uh, that Rob and I uh, face off in playoffs again. So I don't want to reveal some of my sets. Uh, there are some moves that I didn't click this game, so there are, there are some things that I do want to keep a secret. But uh, basically, the, uh, the matchup, as you can see, it's going to come up on your screen. This is his team. I'm actually going to get it myself. There we go, didn't have it open. Um, his team is made up of Mega Gardevoir, Terrakion, which is one of his Zemons, uh, Tornadus Therian, Nidoqueen, Scizor, Slowbro, Hydreigon, pretty much everything that I named that's uh, on the field. Uh, he also has a Rotomo, a Golur, a Ditto, a Crawdont, and a Luxray in the back. So uh, his Zemons are Hydreigon, uh, Crawdont, and Terrakion. So, going into this game, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, uh, Terrakion might be set up. I know the Needle Queen's more than likely going to be his check to my uh, Mega Deancey, even though I didn't bring it. It's a, it's a big threat to his team, so I can see that. Uh, I was going to bring Mega Deancey initially with Psychic, uh, because I knew that he would probably pack a Shooka Berry for the Earth Power. Uh, so I was going to bring Psychic so that I could hit uh, not only the Terrakion, but the Needle Queen for super effective damage. I didn't want to bring Earth Power, uh, because uh, there was no need to against his team, really. Uh, Psychic just did the job just as well. So uh, I ultimately decided, after a couple of mocks, to not bring Mega Deancey, because I felt like the matchup wasn't great. And I didn't think he was going to bring Hydreigon uh, because of my Mega Deancey. So it, the only way that Hydreigon beats Mega Deancey is if it's faster, so choice scarfed, and locks itself into a steel move like Iron Tail or Flash Cannon. Uh, but I didn't think that if he brought Hydreigon, it more than likely wasn't going to come scarfed uh, because it's walled by a lot of Pokemon on, on my team. It gives my Bisharp setup. Uh, it's just not a good time for him. So I really didn't see the Hydreigon coming. Everything else on the field uh, on his side. Uh, I did see coming. Uh, the Slowbro, I expected, the Terrakion, the Scizor, the Nidoqueen, and the Mega Gardevoir. Uh, as his last Mon, though, I did expect Cronaut because that thing puts in a tremendous amount of work onto my team. It's also a Dark-type, so uh, it fills that role on his team relatively well. So, I built a team in Consequence. As you can see, we're bringing uh, Chalito, Stikirin Black, OG Hypnotoad, the Acelgore, uh, Necrozma, which is Nom's Game Room. We have JB Productions, the Bisharp. Diglett Dreams, the Flygon, and finally Redithin, the uh, the Oven, the <laughs> Rotom Heat. So um, I'm going to explain my sets as we get into the game, so I'm going to play it for you guys. Uh, I'm going to lead off here with uh, my Acelgore against his uh, Mega Gardevoir. I didn't think he'd want to take a hit, so I just went for a spike. Uh, he Mega Evolves and just goes straight for the Hyper Voice, so I'm like, okay, got to get the heck out of here, go into my check. It's fine, I'm still at 21, this is okay. Uh, this thing outspeeds this whole team, so it doesn't matter. Gonna go into my Rotom. He pulls a nice switch out into his slow bro. I'm thinking, okay, what the heck is this thing gonna do to me? I'm just gonna go for a Volt Switch. I don't care if he goes into Nido Queen. Judging by that damage, this thing is Assault Vest. So I was scared immediately. I go out into my Kirim thinking that I can take a hit. He goes to Scald, gets a burn. Now, this is very crucial, guys. This is actually really, really important. Uh, I did take a risk by going into, uh, in, into Kirim. Uh, but I didn't want to bring in my Necrozma just yet, because my Necrozma is a very special set that's designed to take on his entire team, uh, except for Hydreigon, again, which I didn't expect to come. So, uh, I, immediately, I lose a very, very important Mon, uh, because this thing does have two physical attacks. So, right here, I'm going to go for the Fusion Bolt, I'm going to weaken this Slowbro, as he's just going to uh, throw out a Foul Play. It's going to do a good amount of damage. Now, I expect him to not want to stay in on my next Fusion Bolt and keep his Slowbro, so I'm actually going to go for a Roost right here. As he brings in his Mega Gardevoir, now you're going to see why this burn matters so much. I have Iron Head on this set. Iron Head Oko's from this range if I'm not burned. But I'm burned, so I'm not going to be able to, to knock this thing out. Uh, as you, can, you guys can see, you haven't seen my item yet. He goes for a Toxic and misses, and this would have been very crucial if this Iron Head wasn't a burnt Iron Head. I would have knocked out this Gardevoir, 
and my Kirim would have still been at a very good amount of health. This is extremely important for later in the game. So now he's going to go for a Hyper Voice. I have a Roselli Berry, and I'm able to take that no problem. Uh, it does 48%, and I'm able to knock him out with the next Iron Head. Goodbye, Mega Gardevoir, one of the biggest threats gone. So that's that's a huge relief. He's now going to go out into his High Dragon, and I'm terrified. Uh, I, <laughs> dragon move coming my way. I'm like, okay, I got to switch out, going to my specially defensive wall, which is Rotom Heat. Doesn't take that so well. This thing is Life Orb. Okay, so it's going to wear itself down. It's not Choice Scarf, so I didn't bring Cho Choice Scarf High Dragon. It's Life Orb. Interesting. Um, and this was, my, my Rotom Heat was only here for his Guard of War, so I didn't mind it taking a hit. Now, here's my first misplay of the match. Uh, I don't count switching into Kirim on a slow row a misplay, uh, because if I don't get burned, I can set up a sub for free, anything like that, so um, I don't count that as a misplay, but this one right here is, I have enough health to take another Dark Pulse. I've already stated that I do not need Rotom for anything else. It's decent for Scizor, but I don't need it for anything else. So my play here should be to weaken this High Dragon by going for a Volt Switch. If it hits me, it hits me, it's fine. But instead, I decide to Hard Switch out into my Bisharp, as uh, he's going to go here for uh, a Taunt. So had I gotten off Volt Switch damage, you guys are going to see right now, this High Dragon's packing Flamethrower, but I'm a Scarfed Bisharp, and I'm about to hit this High Dragon with an X Scissor. After my X Scissor damage, he sits at 22%. After his Life Orb, he's going to go down to 12. So had I gotten off the Volt Switch, there was a chance, there was a very good chance that this High Dragon would be dead right here. It would be gone. Not have to deal with it anymore during the game. Would have been great. But now, I'm forced into my Selgor, but a Selgor has a really good matchup right here. Uh, I'm just going to go for a safe uh, Bug Buzz, I believe, on this turn as he is going to go out into his Nidoqueen, which is fine. I'm expecting rocks, and I did pack Encore, uh, so I'm going to get up a spike as he does go for his Stealth Rocks. Uh, now, this is a problem because I do have to get rid of them at some point in the game, or else my Selgor will not be able to come back in, and it's very important to me, uh, this game. So I'm going to Encore him into Stealth Rock. I'm going to get another layer of Spike up. He's going to go into Scizor, uh, very much expected. I'm going to miss a Focus Blast. So... There's uh, a little bit of hacks against me. Uh, this Scizor would have easily taken about 44%, which would have been nice. It doesn't really matter in the long run. Uh, I am just going to pull out a switch here into my Kirin Black and sack it. Now, had I hit that Focus Blast, I might have been more inclined to maybe go into my Rotom, uh, save my Kirin for later, anything like that. So I'm going to sack off my Kirin. It doesn't do too much this game anyway. He's going to go for Bullet Punch. I'm now going to go into Necrozma. This is a lure set, guys. Uh, I expected him to uh, want to go for a Bug Move right here. And I pack HP Fire on this, and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna catch the Scizor off guard. Gonna knock it out with an HP Fire, and uh, now he's gonna go out into his huge threat again, the one that's still alive. And here's the problem, guys. I don't have anything to touch this High Dragon on my Necrozma, and everything on my team is gonna take damage from Stealth Rocks at this point. I know his entire set. It's Taunt Roost. Well, I'm about to find out that it's Roost right here. I'm gonna go out into my Flygon directly. Uh, and I'm going to see that he has Roost. So, I know his entire set. He's got Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Roost, and Taunt. So, I'm pretty free to go for an Earthquake right here. Um, I know that he's not going to want to stay in on a potential Dragon Dance. That's very, very risky for him. So, I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. And I am going to catch the Needle Queen. And just as I expected, it is Shookaberry. Uh, but it's not going to be able to take uh, an Earthquake and another Earthquake. So, it's going to go straight down here. Uh, I'm thinking at this point that he thinks I'm Choice Scarfed, uh, and that's why I brought it on, on the Hydreigon, was be, to be able to catch a kill. Uh, and now he's going to go into a slow bro. Now, there's a play that I could have made right here. Um, I'm not choice. He knows I'm not choice um, after I click my next move. But I'm going to take a tremendous amount of damage right here, and you guys are going to see why, because I need to get rid of these rocks. The only way I win this game is if a Selgor beats everything. I have Focus Blast and I have Bug Buzz. I can beat everything on his team. But to do that, my Selgor is sitting at 21%. I need to get rid of these rocks. So I'm forced to defog right here. I get rid of the spikes for him and he's going to go for an Ice Beam. And that leaves me at 3%. So very, very bad. I'm going to go for a U-turn now. And there's a move I could have clicked right here that would have knocked out the Slowbro. Doesn't really matter in the long run because I'm going to, I'm just going to go out into my Necrozma. He's going to go for a Scald. He's not going to get a burn, but he is going to get a crit, so that puts me pretty low. And now I have to go for a Moonlight. 
uh, as he's going to go out into his Terrakion, which is fine. Now, right here, I probably should have predicted the double uh, and him not to want to take an attack. So uh, I probably should have doubled myself into uh, Selgor right here. But I just go for the safe Slash Shock. If I get the... Uh, I don't know what kind of Terrakion it is yet. If it's Focus Sash, I want to be able to, to break its Sash in case it's Swords Dance. Uh, so I, that I at least get off damage on it. Uh, and then if it is Swords Dance, uh, then it can't knock me out from the range I'm at. Uh, so I just go for a Psy Shock. It's safe. And uh, now I'm going to switch out into my Flygon. He's going to go for the Dark Pulse. He's going to knock on my Flygon. Now, we're down to 3-3. Three to three. This is a 3-3 three to three situation. I'm going to go out into my Selgor. I have no reason not to Bug Buzz right here. Zero reason. He can go into Slowbro. I know it's Assault Vest. It's going to take one. It's not going to take two. I go for Bug Buzz. Actually, it, it doesn't even take one. It just dies. All right. <laughs> so there goes Slowbro. Excuse me. There goes Slowbro. Uh, this, I had this game a while ago, so I'm trying to remember everything. Now, he's going to go out into his Terrakion now. By the way he brings in his Terrakion, I'm thinking one of two things. It's Focus Sash, and he's about to get up a Rock Polish. Or it's um, uh, it's Choice Scarf. Those are the only two possibilities that I see. And Choice Scarf made a lot of sense against my team. So I'm going to switch out here and I'm going to go into Necrozma. And because I'm not fully physically defensive, the Stone Edge is actually going to do quite a bit. Luckily he doesn't crit it. And uh, I am able to Moonlight up on the following turn. Now, I expect to switch out into Hydreigon right here. And uh, I, I think this is where I double into a Selgor. Uh, as no, I go for another Moonlight. I can sack my Rotom, so it's not a big deal. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into Rotom Heat. He's going to fire off a Dark Pulse. He's going to take a Life Orb hit, and he's going to take another Life Orb hit on the following turn. So right here, uh, he's going to go for Dark Pulse. That's fine. I'll take it. And now I get to go out into a Selgor, and this is misplay number two, guys. This is my biggest misplay of the season so far. Right here. Focus Blast doesn't kill Terrakion from full. There is zero reason for me to click Focus Blast. Bug Buzz puts Terrakion in range of a Focus Blast later in the game. So essentially what happens here is if I click Focus Blast and I land it on the Terrakion, great, I switch out into Necrozma, it's fine. He can try to attack me. I just have to predict the turn that he goes back into Hydreigon bring back in my Selgor, fire off a Bug Buzz, and I'm fine. I win the game. It's over. But instead, I'm going to click Focus Blast, and once again, a Selgor forgot his glasses and misses a Focus Blast. So now this Terrakion is still at full. So this is really annoying. Now he's going to go for a Stone Edge. This is fine. I'm going to be at uh, 51%. And here is where I believe I double back into my Selgor. And this time, I think I'm going to fire off another Focus Blast, and I think I'm going to connect, I believe. So, I'm going to connect the Focus Blast. Perfect. Bring it down to 14%. Now, I just need to uh, switch in and, and into my Necrozma and hope he misses. I'm playing off a miss on the Stone Edge, but Rob's a better player than that. He knows that I have nothing on my Necrozma for his High Dragon, and all he needs to do is click Close Combat twice. It is a 2 at KO on my Necrozma because of my spread and there's nothing I can do about it, and Close Combat knocks out both Necrozma from here, as well as my Selgor. So, unfortunately, uh, that is going to be GG. We do lose 2-0 because of that little misplay. Uh, because you guys saw that double that I made. Had I gotten off the damage necessary on his uh, Hydreigon, uh, sorry, on his uh, Terrakion with the Bug Buzz initially, rather than going for Focus Blast the first turn, when I would have doubled back into a Selgor, if I would have had that same string of plays, then I go for Focus Blast. If that one connects, either it kills the Hydreigon or it kills the Terrakion. If it kills the Terrakion, his Hydreigon comes back in. I bug buzz it. Game over. If it kills the Hydreigon, his Terrakion comes in, has to lock itself into Stone Edge or Rock Slide or whatever, and knock out my Selgor. And then he has to hit an absolute max roll or a crit on my uh, Necrozma. And I know that he's Scarfed, so I can freely fire off a Psy Shock. I don't even re need to risk Moonlights. So that was a pretty big mistake on my part, going for Focus Blast the first time. Ultimately, the second one might have missed. Uh, I don't know what would have happened. But regardless, getting off necessary damage on Terrakion before going for a Focus Blast on it the second time was my appropriate play. So uh, this it was pretty badly played on my end, I would say. Uh, just those couple of misplays. Other than that, I think I had a pretty solid match. Um, 
probably letting my bisharp go down too early was a big a big issue because I would have been able to uh, I would have been able to essentially get rid of the choice scarf on the Terrakion uh, with a knockoff at some point. Like he might have switched it in on a knockoff. Yes, I would have given a just uh, given him a justified boost, uh, but then without a choice scarf, he no longer speeds my Selgor, and I knock him out with a uh, focus blast after the knockoff damage. So uh, maybe not the best play. Also, not going for Volt Switch with my Rotom onto his I Dragon, leaving it alive for the remainder of the game. That was a pretty big deal. So, uh, as you guys could see, my Rotom just ended up being sack fodder because I caught his Scizor off guard with Necrozma anyway, so um, I think I should have probably thought that through a little bit more. There are a few things uh, that I will correct if ever we meet again in the, uh, in the playoffs uh, because we do not face each other for the remainder of the season. That is a guarantee. Um, there are a few things that I will do differently, and uh, I've already got a really good game plan against him for next time, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but I think he will be prepared for certain things uh, that I revealed. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Unfortunately, we do take a loss this week. Uh, it's only a 2-0. It's not too bad. It's to one of the better players uh, in the league. There are roughly three to four players that I would consider uh, better than myself in this league uh, or on my level. And uh, and I've already faced one of them. So that's, uh, that's one out of the way. <laughs> now we just have to uh, continue on. Uh, we are facing Jar, I believe, week five. Uh, so that's that's one of the four players that I was talking about. Jar is definitely on my league. He's in my league. He's uh, he's on my level. He's currently one and two, but that's uh, that's not uh, conductive of or conducive of uh, of what kind of player he is. He's really an amazing player. We build all the time together and we, we help each other prep. Um, he's actually the one that came up with my Necrozma set. There's one move on there that I never clicked, and I'm not gonna reveal what it is. I'm going to keep that in my back pocket, but yeah, that's uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to check all the coaches out in the description down below as well, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!